The World Trade Center reopens for business. Thank you for joining us for another Bank of Cardiff newscast. There can be few more potent symbols of hope than that of a building rising from the ashes. For New Yorkers, the pride at seeing the 104-story World Trade Center assert itself in the famous skyline is surely tempered by the loss of the iconic Twin Towers that once stood on the same spot. But it's a triumph all the same, a resounding affirmation of the service-as-usual philosophy that so eloquently defined this city's response to the unthinkable. A little over 13 years after the terrorist attacks of 9-11 and Lower Manhattan is a very different place. If anything, the area has prospered. Around 60,000 more residents now live here, many more than before 2001, so there's a buzz in the streets, restaurants and shops, even when Wall Street closes for the day. Understandably, there's been some sensitivity around the issue of safety. Architect T.J. Gottesdiener of the Skidmore, Owens and Merrill firm that produced and oversaw the final design claimed that the skyscraper went above and beyond the city's existing building code with a core of steel reinforced concrete. Patrick Foy, executive director of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, called it, quote, the most secure office building in America. Well, at 1,776 feet or 541 meters, it's certainly America's tallest. Number one is the flagship tower of the 16-acre site and overlooks the National September 11 Memorial and Museum, built in the footprints of the Twin Towers and designed to honor the victims who lost their lives on that sunny September morning. About 170 of Condé Nast staff will be moving into the building this week, filling five floors, with 3,000 more employees joining them in early 2015. Pictures released today gave the world a glimpse of the remarkable interiors of this shimmering building, including the soaring lobby, reception and hallways leading to trains in the street. An observation deck will eventually be open to the public and will offer views stretching across to the Statue of Liberty and out towards the Atlantic. It's not been an easy journey. The eight-year construction project was dogged by political, financial and legal infighting that almost derailed it. But as progress became more advanced, controversy took a back seat. Number four is complete, beginning to be populated by the Port Authority, while number three is also well underway. As you might imagine, for such a prestigious project, space here is at the top of the global price range. $69 per square foot below the 63rd floor and $80 to $100 as you rise through the stories. The building is 60% leased with another 80,000 square feet earmarked for advertising firm Kids Creative, stadium operator Legends Hospitality, BMB Group Investment and Servcore, a provider of executive offices. Now, no date has been set for the building's official inauguration, but the partial opening of number one has sent a ripple of excitement through the city. The New York City skyline is whole again as one World Trade Center takes its place in Lower Manhattan, commented Patrick Foy. The opening of this iconic building is a major milestone in the transformation of Lower Manhattan into a thriving 24-7 neighborhood. Jessica Lapin, president of the Alliance for Downtown New York, added that the building's opening showed that, quote, our way of life, our determination to carry on, to write, create, and speak our minds would not be cowed by the evil that visited us that dark day 13 years ago. Well, join us later this week for another Bank of Cardiff newscast. And remember that all our newscasts are available on our website, www.bankofcardiff.com forward slash newscasts.